Set a word on that. Set a word on that. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I couldn't have declined this invitation if I wanted to. <laughs> In July 2016, I had a heart attack. The kind of heart attack they call a widow maker. A heart condition you don't know you have until you drop dead. <laughs> and while I was out unconscious, all I thought it did was take a nap. And when I got up, I couldn't walk. So I sat in the floor for about an hour, and then I called my sister who lives down in Brunswick County and said, I think you need to go with me to the emergency room. So I was right there at the rehab center, right there at Parham Road, for seven weeks, mm -hmm. learning how to walk again. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but during the time I was there, your pastor came and passed it to me, Amen. ministered unto me. Amen. While I was, while my, while my heart was stopping, I kicked myself back to life. I dislocated one bone and broke another one in his right ankle. So this is the first time in over 50 years I've ever sat down to preach a sermon. But your, your pastor, Reverend C. Diane Mosby said to me, the reason I'm here is the angel said, not yet. Not yet. Only by God's grace. Amen. Uh, you, we've heard of people, all of a sudden you get a call saying somebody died from a heart attack. Yes. And they didn't know they had a heart condition. So I'm glad the pastor said not yet. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for life and health and strength. Amen. We thank you for all that has preceded, all the worship, the testimony, the witness. <laughs> But always, oh God, we ask that you show us the way. Show us the way not to fortune nor fame, nor to win laurels or praise for our name, but show us the way to tell the great story, to live the great story. For thine is the commonwealth, the power, and the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I greet you on this Sunday, on the ninth anniversary of the Reverend Dr. C. Diane Mosley from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. And this is what an amplified version of the Somali text says. When the deacon asked me, the pastor asked me, what's your scripture? I gave her the scripture, Mark 4, 35, 41. She then said, what translation are you using? <laughs> Take your time, Dr. Tan. You get comfortable. One of the advantages of learning Hebrew and Greek is you translate your own text. So if the scripture that shows on the screen is not you ever heard before, it's the Katie Cannon translation. <laughs> <laughs> and an amplified version of the scripture says this. And Jesus spent the day teaching by the Sea of Galilee, come on, come on. proclaiming the good news to a crowd of women, men, and children who gathered to hear him. Yes. And when evening came, a kind of reassuring calm, tranquility descended all around Jesus and his disciples. Yes. And during this pause, at the end of a long day of preaching and teaching, the question arose, what are we going to do next? Amen. Should we go home? Mm -hmm. Or maybe should we find a place to lie down and get some rest right where we are? You know, sign off and call it quits. <laughs> Everyone involved was aware of the fact that the day had been long and the work had been difficult. Neither Jesus nor his <coughs> disciples who were with him could keep on keeping on working at such a high level of intensity without first getting some rest and relaxation. But sitting down and stopping is not how Jesus answers the question, what are we going to do next? Mm -hmm. Even when Jesus was fatigued, exasperated, feeling burned out, Jesus did not say, like the cowboys used to say in the old time TV show, Rawhide, Jesus never said, call in the dogs and call it quits. Mm. Quit the job. Come on. So it's almost like what my nieces and nephews, when they come to visit me, 
They said, Aunt Kate, you don't have any children. You don't like children? I said, I love children. I said, well, before we can finish one thing, you ask me what we're going to do next. I said, I can't get anything done if you're here. And that's the way it's feeling like in this text. Now, they worked all day, and the question is, what shall we do next? No, instead, in our scripture lesson on this anniversary Sunday, we see Jesus standing at the water edge. Jesus is standing there at the seashore with his disciples who feel overworked, run down, and very tired. So the disciples ask, what shall we do next? And this is the same question that comes to us today. Those of us gathered here this morning, after all kinds of celebrations, anniversaries, and jubilee commemorations, yeah, yeah, yeah. the next question is, what shall we do next? Amen. And the answer Jesus gave his disciples in yesteryears is the exact same answer Jesus is offering to each of us this morning. When we ask, what shall we do next? My God. And Jesus answered by saying, let us go across to the other side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My God. Therefore, dear beloved, our sermonic title on this anniversary Sunday, 2018, is Crossing Over to the Other Side. Yes. Right. Crossing yeah. Over to the Other Side. Come on, Richard. At this point in the scripture, we read, and leaving the crowd behind him, the disciples took Jesus in a boat, and the Bible says a great windstorm arose, and the waves pounded and beat into the boat. So much so the boat was saturated with water, threatening to sink the boat. But Jesus was in the stern of the boat, in the back, in the aftermost part, and Jesus found sound asleep. So the disciples went to the stern of the boat and woke Jesus up, and they asked, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? Jesus woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, 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 peace. <laughs> Then the wind ceased, and there was dirt that calm all around. The Sea of Galilee became as smooth as glass. Several years ago, I took a group of students from New York Theological Seminary to Israel. And when we got on the boat on the Sea of Galilee, we were not the only ones on the boat. When my students took charge, they stopped and they sang every verse of James Cleveland. <laughs> people on the boat said, who are these people? Where are they from? They had the captain to turn off the motor. And we just sat there on the Sea of Galilee. Jesus then turned and asked the disciples, after he had calmed the sea and stilled the waves, Jesus asked, why are you so afraid? Mm -hmm. Have you no faith? That's right. Because the disciples were filled with so much fear, they turned to one another and asked, who is this? Mm -hmm. Who is this man? Who is this that even the wind and sea <coughs> obey him? Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, according to our scripture, our first lesson for us today is that each of us must realize when we are asked, who is this? Who is this man? Who is this man that even can calm the wind and the waves and they obey him? Mm -hmm. That we must say, Jesus is a preacher. Mm -hmm. Jesus does not pass a mega church. Well, right. Jesus does not host a Christian TV televangelist talk show. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Come on Jesus is not writing and publishing any New York Times best-selling self-help books. Jesus. Come on now. As a real deal, Jesus does not ask us to send in $19.95 before he sends us a prayer cloth or a bottle of holy water. Jesus does not even ask us to donate online by way of PayPal. Jesus does not even ask for a love offering when he gets through preaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The powerful gospel message that Jesus teaches and preaches is free. Yes. This good news message is free to one and to all. Yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. Therefore, this first lesson invites us to wrap our minds around the fact that Jesus came to Galilee, preaching good news to the poor. Yes. Proclaiming release to the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, liberating all who are oppressed, proclaiming that God's time is being fulfilled. Mark, the gospel writer, wants us to know that Jesus is the kind of preacher who integrates his talk with his walk. Mm, yes. Jesus preaches the same sermon over and over again. Mm, yes. 
repent and believe in the good news. Yeah. Right. As the incarnate word, Jesus is the word made flesh. Mm -hmm. The writer of the gospel, John, summarized the doctrine of incarnation in this way. In the beginning was the word, mm -hmm. and the word was with God, mm -hmm. and the word was God. Yes, yes, yes. As a divine word, Jesus is a preacher whose word makes things happen. Jesus calls and people follow. Mm -hmm. Jesus uses words to cure the sick, to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus uses words to strengthen us when we're weak and to build us up when we feel torn down. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us that Jesus speaks with the power that straightens out withered hands and enables broken legs to heal and yes. to walk again. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, the words of Jesus have authority like no other. Jesus speaks over the wind and the sea, and they obey him. Yes. As we continue exegeting our scripture for this anniversary Sunday, the second lesson in this biblical text invites us to realize what it means for Jesus and the disciples to go across to the other side. Yeah, yeah. The scriptures tell us that Jesus and the disciples are out on the Sea of Galilee. Jesus and his disciples are participating <coughs> in what liberation theologians call a boundary crossing mission. Mm. Yeah. A yeah. boundary crossing yeah. mission. Yes, yeah. sir. Mm -hmm. And dearly beloved sisters and brothers, it is important for us to keep in the forefront of our minds that whenever we cross boundaries, we will often find ourselves in stormy, chaotic, yeah. turbulent, yeah. boisterous, yeah. threatening situations. Come on, Doctor. Yeah. And this fact is as true today as it was in biblical times. All right. Suddenly, out of nowhere, with no forewarning, no caution, <clears throat> Jesus and his disciples find themselves in the middle of a great and powerful storm. Mm -hmm. The waves are high, so high are the waves, the water is bouncing into the boat, and the boat is filling up with water. As God fearing women and men, as Christian youth and adults, it's important for us to get hold of the fact that what we have here is a natural storm raging on the outside. Mm -hmm. well, and at the same time, there's a ferocious spiritual storm brewing internally, being stirred up on the inside. Mm -hmm. The disciples feel as they're about to drown, and yet, yet Jesus was in the boat with them, sound asleep. Mm -hmm. After Jesus wakes up, Jesus speaks words that not only do something on the sea, but the words of Jesus do something to the sea. Yes. Jesus rebukes the wind. Jesus silences the, the rage, waving wave, raging waves. Mm -hmm. Jesus stops the wind from blowing and creates peace and quiet all around. And yet we can hear the traumatic fear and the chaotic troubling storms raging inside the hearts of the disciples. Mm -hmm. Let us listen closer to our text. And let us imagine the sound of fear that is beating inside of the disciples. Jesus just proclaimed, peace be still. Peace be still. And the storm stopped, yes. just like that. Yes. But the disciples are lacking faith. They're freaking out with fear. Mm. So Jesus turns and asks the disciples, why are you so afraid? Hey. Have you no faith? Mm -hmm. Jesus is not beat around the bush. He cuts to the heart of the matter. Mm -hmm. Jesus realizes that the men in the boat with him need spiritual surgery. Yes, yeah. They need an operation in the core of their beings. Mm -hmm. They need medical surgery for their souls. Yeah. See, church, the trouble in this biblical text is not the storm raging on the outside. Bad weather on the outside is a fact of life. Yes, right. yeah. The winds and waves of a turbulent world will always come. Mm -hmm. But the major trouble addressed in this scripture lesson it's not stormy weather out on the sea, mm -hmm. but the paralyzing fear that lives in each of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Mm -hmm. The major trouble addressed in this scripture lesson is not stormy weather out on the sea, but the paralyzing fear that lives in each of our hearts. Yes. In other words, what would you do and what would I do differently this very day if we let go of fear? Yes. What would we do differently yeah. if we walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. Even after the disciples saw the miracle of the passing storm with their own eyes, and even after they heard with their ears the silencing of the raging sea, the disciples still lacked the faith to take in all the goodness that was happening to them. 
Most people would expect that after Jesus' powerful proclamation, peace, be still, that the disciples would be doing a happy dance. Mm -hmm. Some form of a modern day version of the Holy Ghost shout, <laughs> such as the moonwalk or the Cupid shuffle or the Mindy hop or the wobble or the next slide. Come on, Dr. Curtis. Yes. But instead of celebrating the peace of God that passes all understanding, <laughs> disciples see Jesus working salvation in their lives, and yet they're fidgety, they're jittery, they're nervous. Not like I am, man. <laughs> Yes, all right. Yes, all right. I'm at the jittery part, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But instead of celebrating the peace of God that passes all understanding, the disciples see Jesus working acts of salvation in their lives, but they're fidgety, jittery, tense, skittish, because the disciples are consumed with fear. Mm -hmm. And when we look back over our own lives and wonder, where in our own personal testimony should we be doing the happy dance? Do the beloved, just like the disciples in our text, too many must feed on fear for spiritual food. Yeah. Mm. Ah, and so the question that Jesus asked the disciples is the exact same question Jesus poses to each of us this very day. Why are we so afraid? Mm -hmm. Have we no faith? Mm -hmm. Let us each engage in a rigorous self-inventory and continue asking ourselves throughout this day and every day this week, what would I do differently today if I were not scared? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus is near. Mm -hmm. yes. Jesus calm and stormy seas all around us. Yes. Yes. And yet like the disciples, we too still live with so much fear. Mm -hmm. Instead of putting our faith in a God who has sufficient presence, yes. sufficient power and sufficient knowledge yes. to prop us up on everything inside. Yes. Yes. My, my, my. And yet still we live with fear. Yes, God and Jesus is right there with the disciples. Jesus is there in a small boat with them. And yet the next question after Jesus comes to see, the disciples ask, who is this? <laughs> the mighty waters of the rainy sea understand the divine yeah. power. Yeah. But the disciples allow <coughs> fear to block their vision. Yeah. Yeah. They cannot see the comforter right in their midst. Oh, have mercy. Let us ask ourselves where are we seeing, not seeing the presence of God right in our lives. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where is fear blocking our eyes? In what part of our lives does fear have such a stranglehold on us, mm. such a death grip at the core of our beings that we are unable to see, nor can we hear, that God is with us, mm. that God is really here with us yes. now and every day. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Let me share with you a story that happened after the horrendous earthquake in Haiti in 2010. Mm -hmm. There was a Haitian man who was trapped on a piece of concrete from a collapsed building. He was lying on his side as the weight of the piece of broken stone rested on top of him. And all of this was caught on camera. The news reporter was there to get the story. The reporter conducted an interview with this man as he lay on his side underneath a slab of cement. And this is what the reporter asked him, Mister, what are you telling yourself as you wait for the rescuers to arrive? What do you think this man is thinking he's laid there with a slab of Concrete squeezing the life out of him. 
One might guess that the injured man said, I wonder why this news reporter is interviewing me right now. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Or the injured man could have uttered a lament, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? But instead, in response to the reporter's question, what are you telling yourself as you wait to be rescued mm -hmm. from the sea of earthquake, rubble, and dirt, and debris all around and on top of him? Mm -hmm. The injured man answered, I'm saying over and over again, Jesus, 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 Amen. my life is in your hand. Yes. Amen. Jesus, Amen. Jesus, Jesus, yes. my life is in your hand. Under the weight of a broken slab of cement, under the weight of the world shattered by a devastating earthquake, comes a <laughs> profound statement of trust, a prophetic witness of faith. Mm -hmm. Jesus, 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 my life is in your hands. This man knew who Jesus was as he waited for the rescue people to come after the crushing storm. And this man surrendered his life, his security, his all into God's hands. And this is on this very day, this invitation is extended to us for us to go and do likewise. Mm -hmm. During this season of Lent, how often can we say, Jesus, 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 my, 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 my life is in your hand. My, my, my. The disciples even asked, who is this? Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Maybe, just maybe, we are like the disciples, wherein we do not know who Jesus is in our own lives and how Jesus has helped us in our overall health and well-being. But we have not taken the time to stop and fully comprehend what it means that even the wind and the sea obey Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes, dearly beloved, Jesus is present in our public world. And Jesus is everywhere in our private and personal lives. Mm -hmm. And yet when the storms rage and the sea billows roll, there are those among us who still question, who is this? Mm -hmm. How can we feel God's love and mercy in Christ if we do not recognize Jesus is with us? Jesus is with us in our personal lifeboat yes. each and every day. Yes. Yes. What I'm saying here is that often, far too often, just like the disciples in our scripture, we as contemporary Christians, we allow fear to get in the way of our ability to accept the blessings of peace, the freedom from chaos, drama, and confusion. <coughs> so as god fearing women and men, as Christian youth and adults, those of us who teach Sunday school, sing in the choir, work in the food pantry, participate in Bible study, evangelize in our neighborhoods, read our morning devotions, say grace before each meal, get down on our knees at night to say our prayers. Jesus is asking each of us gathered here today, why are you so afraid? Why are you so scared? Where is our faith? Sisters and brothers, we can not let fear become so strong that it paralyzes us. Because what fear does is faith is force faith out of our lives. Right. Yes. Yes. What fear does is create a deficiency in our theology. <laughs> Let us take a minute and ask ourselves, how are we allowing fear to block out God's love? How are we allowing fear to blind us to God's presence right here, right now? So on this day, February 11, 2018, let us wrestle with why we're so afraid. Mm. Is our fear based on knowing that the time we know now, we will soon know it no more? Mm. Ah. Or do we fear being out of control, thinking we're really the ones in charge? Mm. Ah. Ah. Is our fear situated in losing our jobs? Or is our fear housed in the fact that now that we've retired from full-time employment, we are afraid that the days and the month are longer than the money we have to pay our bills. Oh, preach, preach. Are we paralyzed by the fear that the cancer preach. will return? Mm. Are we afraid that we not found a matching organ donor? Mm. Or is our fear bound up in seeing the early signs of Alzheimer's mm. in the eyes of the ones we love? Mm. Yes. Other of us fear the crazy winds of life that blow off course time and time again. But this, I mean, some of us fear our own helplessness at being the storms, making, and making the storms in our own lives. Yeah. Those hurricanes and tornadoes, the cyclones and tsunamis that we bring upon ourselves. Yeah. For instance, if our fear is situated in an abusive partner coming back to wreak havoc in our home. My Lord. Or do we fear not being loved? Do we suffer from the fear of failure? Or are we afraid of the fear of success? 
Are we paralyzed by the tragedies we've experienced throughout our lives? Or are we terrified by life's beauty, goodness, and unspeakable joy? Why are you so afraid? Why are we so afraid? Where is our faith? At the heart of all of these fears is the fear of the absence of God. And yet, in fact, all the time, God is near. God is here. Yes. God is in Jesus, and Jesus is in the lifeboat with us, yes. Yes. morning yes. by morning. Yes. These probing, challenging questions about fear boils down to this. Do we really trust God to be with us in the midst of life's storms? Do we really trust God to be with us in our lifeboat when the lifeboat is rocking every which way? Mm -hmm. Do you and I have enough faith to trust God when we find ourselves in distress? Do we keep on believing that God can and God will take care of us in, when we're in a state of emergency? Mm -hmm. When the waters are raising, raise, ra rising and we are sinking? Our faith is seldom tested when we're doing well. Mm -hmm. ah. But the test of faith comes when, you, when we need to be rescued. Yes. Ah. So the heavy winds and the strong waves in life, it is during these dangerous and trying times, mm -hmm. if we're not careful, we will allow fear to cause us to drown in the sea of right. despair yes. and hopelessness. Yes. 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 Fear is the opposite of faith. Mm -hmm. That is why Jesus is asking, why are we afraid? Why are we scared? Mm -hmm. Have we no faith? And the third and final lesson in our scripture lesson for the morning does not focus on the weather storming outside in our lives. Storms in life are part of the human condition. So the question is not if storms will come, but what we will do when they do come. Yeah. 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 What do we do when the lightning flashes and the thunder rolls and the wind blows and the waves crash and water is flooding our lifeboats? Yes. The real issue is what is our fear factor? Let's ask ourselves, do we have a dry land, sunshine, fair weather faith? Do we truly believe that God is able to take care of us when we're suffering from spiritual seasickness? That God is with us when there's raging, rowdy, rambunctious disturbance in our lives? Authentic Christian discipleship will not allow us to live bent over and bowed down, protected in our life bonkers. God-fearing people cannot live faithfully as spectators, as onlookers and as bystanders, wherein we hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing, and end up doing nothing. Even though the disciples' fear canceled out their faith, their deliverance from the storm still happens. Yes, sisters and brothers, the Bible tells us that even when we lack faith, God still acts on our behalf. Yes. 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 Even when we're weak and feeble and anemic and lukewarm, Lord Jesus. God and Jesus Christ is still faithful to each and every one of us. Yes. Yes. Even when we're paralyzed with fear, Jesus continues to quiet the stormy seas and speak peace into our families, into our churches, and into our communities. Yes. God's activity is not dependent upon whether we have faith or not. God acts Activity is dependent on God being God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, as the Son of God, has power over creation. Jesus does not wait for us to try to figure out who he is before we receive the blessing. Even when fear is the order of the day, Jesus the Christ continues to work, saying over and over again, wherever we're hurting and stem and stunned in our lives, peace be still. Yes. The good news is Jesus is not waiting on us. We may not recognize this, but Jesus is right here among us. That's good news. God is always at work. Yes. 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 Declaring Thank peace. You, Lord. Yes. Peace be still. Peace be still. Yes. Morning by morning. morning. Yes, sir. Yes. As we come to the end of today's sermonic text, the Bible tells us that Jesus and the disciples eventually cross over to the other side mm -hmm. so they can fulfill their boundary crossing mission. Yes. In Mark 5, it says that Jesus crossed to the other side of the sea. And when Jesus gets out of the boat, Jesus is confronted by a man who has an unclean spirit, mm -hmm. a man who lives in a cemetery. Yeah. And no one could restrain this man who was full of demonic spirits. People could not even hold him down with chains because every time they shackled him, he broke the chains and tore the ropes into pieces. All night and all day, this man possessed with unclean spirits hollered and cried out in the cemetery. 
bruising himself, making deep cuts in his skin with the stones. Yes. Yeah. But when this man saw Jesus, he ran and he bowed down. Mm -hmm. He ran and he bowed down in front of Jesus and began shouting from the top of his voice, Jesus, son of the most high God, what have you to do with me? I beg you, do not torment me. Then Jesus asked, what is your name? <laughs> and the man replied, my name is Legion, Legion. for we are many. We are yes. many. Right. yes, dear sisters and brothers, Jesus spoke peace to this possessed man, yes, he did. driving out, purging him of unclean spirits. And the next image we see is this man is clothed and in his right mind, yes. sitting with Jesus among the disciples. Yes, yes. yes sir, read Jesus calmed the storms in the life of the man called Legion. Yes. yes. And yes, sir, read, Jesus can and will calm the storms in your life yes. and in mine. Yes, yes sir. Yes, yes. Dear beloved, as we commemorate the ninth anniversary here at the Anointed New Life Baptist Church, let us continue to follow the mandate from Jesus to go across to the other side. Each and every day, each and every day, we experience peace. Peace be still. Yes. We just need to be conscious of it in our personal situation. Yes. The question that follows every time we are blessed with peace is what are we gonna do next? Yeah, right. yeah. And Jesus answers time and time again, go across to the other side. Yeah. Uh, 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 now the fact is that none of, us know, yeah. none of us know how far we have to travel to get to the other side. Come on. Yeah. We do not know what we will find when we cross over. Yeah. But our Lord and Savior says that we must go, we must go and we keep on going. Yeah. yeah crossing over because there are women, men, and children named legions over there. Yes! Yes! Waiting to hear the good news of the gospel. Yes, sir. Each and every day the question is asked in God's creation, who will I send and who will go for us? Uh -huh. And each and every day we each have an opportunity to say, here am I. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Yes, sir. Jesus as the incarnate word is with us. And the Holy Spirit as our comforter is protecting us. So church, let us walk by faith and not by fear. Yes. Knowing that whenever and wherever we are in life's storm, mm -hmm. and the winds are going mad and the waves in life are running wild, that we can trust that the Son of God is in the lifeboat with us. Yes, sir. Saying peace, peace, yes. peace be still. Yes, so that we continue crossing over to the other side. So that we can continue to do the specific work God is laying on our heart of hearts to do. Yeah. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Amen.